The summer is on its way out in Melbourne. Bye bye! The days are getting shorter and wetter, which means the rise of these little bastards. Ow! But why do they bite us? Why do we get red itchy spots? And why do we itch and scratch ourselves at all? Grab a cup of coffee, my science friend, and let's dive into some itchy science. Ah! Welcome back, my science friends. I hope you're all buckled up and ready. Today's topic got me all itchy just by writing the script. Let's start as always with the basics and a bit more broad and look at why we itch at all. Why do we itch? Scientists thought for a long time that itch was a low-level pain signal, which means that the same kind of nerve cell can detect itching and pain. But fairly recently, researchers found out that itching is actually linked to a set of special neurons that produce a neuropeptide called natriuretic polypeptide B, or NPPB in short. How can you even test something like that? And what did they find? In an animal study, they genetically modified mice to not produce NPPB at all, but are otherwise healthy and normal when it comes to feeling things in and on their body. They then exposed them to non-harmful substances that usually create an itch and found that those mice didn't scratch themselves. So no NPPB equals no itching, signaled by no scratching. Now, all of this is great news for people who live with chronic diseases, for example, and desperately want to stop itching. Because the more we understand about itching, the closer we get to actually being able to control or stop it. Like for those annoying mossy bites. Ah. Unfortunately though, it's not as simple as just blocking this neuropeptide NPPB. Why? It sounded pretty easy in those mice. Well, NPPB has another very important job in the body. It is produced by the heart to regulate the amount of sodium released by the kidneys, which is vital to control our blood pressure. And to be honest, blocking itching completely would be a terrible idea for most people. Even though itchy spots are very, very annoying, they stem from a very useful evolutionary development. Scratching itchy spots could, for example, be necessary to remove pesky bugs, dangerous plants or other sort of irritants before they can do any damage to the body. Ugh! All this talking about itching makes me all itchy myself. Itching is in this regard very similar to yawning and can be passed on from one person to the other. Researchers, by the way, also found that this works the same way for monkeys. Itching, being so contagious, has a similar evolutionary benefit. When one member of a group is itchy and starts to scratch themselves, they might have been exposed to a parasite or some other kind of irritant around, and in that case, it's a great idea to get a heads up. By scratching makes the itch worse. Right, so you got bitten by a mosquito or landed in poison ivy, and it is itchy. So f itchy! All you want to do is scratch the area. And for a moment of sweet relief, the itch actually goes away, but then it comes back with vengeance. So you scratch harder, and then it gets itchy again, and the thing goes on and on. You get the idea. Very creatively, scientists call this phenomenon the itch scratch cycle. But why does this happen? As we learned earlier, itch and pain are not the same sensation, but there still is a considerable overlap over the nerve pathways that transmit both of those feelings. And that is exactly the reason that makes scratching an itch so satisfying. The sharp sensation of your nails on your skin stimulates pain receptors and they send pain signals to your brain, which in the acute case simply overwhelm the itch signals. Basically, scratching distracts your brain for a second from the itchy feeling. But that's not all. Once the pain signal comes in, your brain starts to release the neurotransmitter serotonin to dull them. Usually, everybody loves a bit of serotonin. It is wildly known as the happiness chemical, but it actually has a variety of functions in the body. Unfortunately, when it's released through scratching, it won't make you happy at all because it can actually end up intensifying the itch. Yikes. So if you then scratch the itch again, your brain gets triggered to release more and more serotonin, which keeps this vicious cycle going. The takeaway, resist the urge and better not to scratch that itchy patch. 
Easier said than done, especially when it comes to those nasty little mosquitoes. Why they bite, why it itches, and what to do against them. Mosquitoes. They ruin our nights, they carry diseases, literally everybody hates them. But why do they find our blood so irresistible? A fact that isn't quite as widely known is that only female mosquitoes bite to suck our blood. <sighs> Come on, ladies. Usually mosquitoes feed off plant nectar and fruit juices, just like any other insect. Only when the females are developing their eggs, they need blood to grow them. Disclaimer. My science friends, you have to be very, very strong for the next few minutes because I'm about to show you what a mosquito actually does when sucking our sweet, sweet blood and it's getting a little bit disgusting. Actually, very disgusting. So here we go. This, my friend, is a mosquito trunk rummaging around in your tissue until they found your blood vessels and then starting to suck on them. Ow! Yuck. The bite describes, in this case, the best part of this massacre. After the initial bite, the mosquito rummages around for up to four minutes. Four minutes of this! But that's not even enough for this little <laughs> Mosquitoes actually have the audacity to spit in our blood. What the why do they do that? Well, our blood vessels aren't dumb either. When someone is starting to stab around in them, the blood starts clotting so it's not flowing out everywhere. Which is why the mosquito injects anticoagulants, so blood thinner, so it can rummage around and suck our blood in peace without getting stuck. Yes, yes, very disgusting. But the biting and sucking isn't the actual issue. The problem is that most humans are allergic to mosquito saliva. What happens when it gets injected into our blood vessels? Our immune system panics. When our body is confronted by allergens, our immune system produces histamine. This small, inconspicuous molecule is the actual problem behind the mosquito drama as it brings infectious reactions with it. The blood, together with a lot of white blood cells, rushes to the danger zone mosquito bite. Danger zone. The results are reddening, swelling, and itching. <laughs> All of this would actually be really great if mosquito bites were dangerous, but they are not. What we quintessentially suffer from is an overreaction of our immune system that wants to protect us at all costs. Mosquito bites not dangerous? You ask. What about the ones that transfer diseases? Yes, they are dangerous, but an infection reaction doesn't really help in that case either. Great! Thanks, immune system. Okay, but how can we then protect ourselves against mosquito bites? Oh, my science friends, you have to be strong again for those news. It is basically impossible to escape those <laughs> Because of the CO2 you breathe out, mosquitoes can spot you from as far away as 50 meters. The most effective way to escape mosquitoes would therefore be to stop breathing. Yeah, nah, I can't recommend that. Turning the light out when the doors and windows are open in the evening also doesn't really help, as mosquitoes, in contrast to other insects, orient themselves on smell and heat instead of light. And what about mosquito repellents? I'm glad you asked. Scientific studies show that the most effective mosquito repellent is DEET, diethyltoluamide, as the smell does in fact repel mosquitoes. However, Researchers also found that more and more mosquitoes are getting resistant against that. At the end of the day, the best method to minimize mosquito bites is covering your skin with long clothing, installing mosquito meshes on your windows and doors, or sleeping under a mosquito net. I use insect repellent anyway. There are enough mosquitoes left where it works. <sighs> Chemistry. What are your secret weapons against mozzie bites? Are you opting for the chemical club or home remedies? And are you usually the sacrificial lamb at outdoor events? Or do mozzies not really show a pull towards your blood? Let me know in the comments below. Leave me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Stay sciencey.